Alleluia. 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 Give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the adoration for His wonderful works in our lives. Holy. Thank Him especially for our choir. Thank you, Lord. How God is using them to bring praise and worship to His name. May God continue to use them mightily. May He continue to bless them. And through them, bring many souls to the salvation. Thank you, Jesus. First reading today is taken from the book of Ecclesiastes, which means teacher. Chapter 11, verses 1 to 6. This book was written by King Solomon, whom God gave more wisdom than any other human being alive, as well as riches. And the first verse says, As cast your bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. So, the first must ask, how can you cast your bread? Your bread is what will sustain you. That means your food, your money. It says, cast it, throw it upon the waters, and you shall find it after many days. In the natural, that is impossible. But he's telling us that this will happen. Now, when it says waters, there is referring to people. Whenever you see waters, it represents people of this world. It says, cast or give your bread to the people, but you, because you will find that bread, that money, whatever you're giving to people, you will find it after many days. It's just like you sow a seed in the ground, and you expect that after some time, that seed will produce, will grow, and you have a harvest. So you shall find it after many days. Let's go to Proverbs 11:18. Matthew 10, 42. Proverbs 11, 18. Matthew 10, 42. So we have been taught a principle here that when we sow or when we give, that for sure we shall have a return on our investments. In other words, our investment cannot be lost, especially when we give to people. On uh, Matthew 10, 42, Proverbs 11, 18. Anybody can read it first. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Proverbs 11, 18. The wicked man does deceptive work, mm -hmm. but he who sows righteously mm -hmm. will have a sure reward. That is it. He who sows righteously. That means you will not lose your reward. There will be a return on your investments. And it's not going to be what you planted. It's going to come in multiples. A yeah, sure reward. You will surely reap. You know, God is the best person to trade with. Because if you go and put your money in a bank, for instance, <laughs> At the most, they'll give you maybe 1% or 2% interest every year. That's the most I can get right now. The interest are so low. But with God, you get a hundredfold, which is 10,000% interest on your investments. So we have been encouraged here to sow, to cast it. I mean, give it to people because you shall surely find it again. That thing you sow will come back to you. So I give a portion to seven. Can someone read Matthew 10, 42? Matthew 10, 42. Hallelujah. 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 Matthew 10, 42. Yeah. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water mm -hmm. in the name of a disciple, mm -hmm. and surely mm -hmm. I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. I just say, say the same thing. If you give a cup of cold water to a disciple because it's the of Jesus, you will surely get a reward. So we're being told here that there's a short, there's a certainty about this reward. It's not a chance. Some say, oh, what will happen? Suppose I don't get anything. No, no, no. With God, you are surely going to get a reward. And he says that after many days, I mean, some people, some of us, we get very impatient with God. Say, God, I've been sowing and all these things. Nothing has happened for three months or six months. No, no, no. He says, after many days. You cannot sow a seed today and expect it to put a harvest tomorrow. But we human beings, we expect the harvest like yesterday. We cannot wait for God's time. We are not patient. We want it right away. Remember what happened to our prodigal son? He said, he told us that I want my, my inheritance now. He could not wait till his father died. He said, give me my inheritance now. I don't want to wait till you die. And that father actually gave it to him. He said, well, son, if that's the way you feel. And he gave it to him. And we know what happened after that. How he spent all his inheritance on women and drinking. And 
afterwards became penniless, has been eating the food of pigs, a complete abom the abomination for a Jew. And then his eyes opened. He says, Oh, I've sinned against God. And then he went back home. See? So we must not be in a hurry for God's blessings. God's blessings always take time. So don't be in a hurry with God. Don't start timing God. God's time is just our own time. He has no timing. Many of us will say, oh, I've been praying for two years. Nothing has happened. Maybe God doesn't want me to have this. No, 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 no. You will surely get that answer. It's just when. Can you be patient enough like Abraham and wait 25 years for Isaac? Or do you want your immediate blessing like Achan? And you know what happened to him. So I give a portion to seven and also to eight. For you know not what evil shall be upon the earth. Well, there's a connection between evil happening to you and you giving to seven or eight people. There's a connection there. In other words, if you can give what you have to people, you will save yourself from a coming disaster. That's the connection he's saying here. So if you don't know now what's as you are giving, it's like you are paying insurance against the evil to come. Maybe that gift you gave is going to save you from a coming accident. Everybody will die. You'll be the only one that survived. Why? Because of what you have given. That's too many examples. So give a portion to seven and also to eight, for you don't know what it will appear upon there. So as you are giving that portion, you are really buying back your life. Or your children's life, or anything that belongs to you. They say, ah, this death, you say, oh no, I cannot take this person. Why? Because he gave a portion to seven people yesterday. So I'm going to spare him. I won't touch him. You don't know that gift you gave that saved your life. Let's go to Psalm 112, verse 9. And Ephesians 5, 16. Psalm 112, verse 9. Ephesians 5, 16. Verse 9. Yes. His righteousness endures forever. Mm -hmm. His arm will be exalted in honor. You see? The wicked will see it and be vexed. Mm -hmm. He will grant his teeth and melt away. Yes. The desire of the wicked will perish. Thank you. That's fine. You see, the enemies, they are gnashing their teeth at your success and your promotion. They don't know when you are giving to the poor. They don't know when you are doing that charitable acts. All they see is that we don't want this person to progress. We don't want him to get a job. But when you, are, you secretly give to people, so when God promotes you, they start matching their teeth and say, how come? How did he make it? We have been here for so many years. We haven't got a position. Now look at him. Ha. Your secret is to give. The little you have, give it. And you see how God will not promote you. Okay, uh, Ephesians 5, 16. Yes. Because the days are, are evil. That is it. We hear every day of disasters, plane crashes, shootings, killings, floodings. You know, all around you is just one disaster after another. Well, how can you save yourself from this? Your insurance is to give to the poor. That's the insurance you have. You say, ah, how can God protect me? God is giving you the answer here. Begin to give. Many people travel, accidents, something happens to their car, it's plane crash, bus crash, assassinations. Ensure your life. Begin to give. So if the clouds be full of rain and they empty themselves upon the earth, and if the tree falls towards the south or the north, in the place where the tree falls, there shall be. In other words, God's blessings are everywhere. It doesn't matter where you are. Someone say, oh, Maybe if I'm in Canada, maybe if in America, oh, maybe I'll be blessed. No, God can bless you anywhere. There are people who are really prospering in Nigeria, there are people who prosper in America. Even those places where everything doesn't happen, there are people prospering there. It's not really where you are, it's where God's blessings. That really is God's blessings. God can bless you there. Say, so he that observes the wind shall not sow. 
Nos vemos.